Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope your Sunday is going really good. Um, there's one thing I need to quickly do, um, because I, I forgot to do it before, but it won't take two seconds. One, two, done. There we go. Now I can highlight chats. Ah, how are you guys doing? How is your Sunday? How was your weekend? How was your week? Um, how's everything going? Where are you watching from? What is your first language? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know about you. Also, who is your favorite actor? Who's your favorite actress? Um, this These questions are relevant for today's English and Chill special. We're doing good English, bad English. We're, I'm going to look at clips that you've sent me. <clears throat> clips that you have sent me of famous people trying to speak English. So I'm going to have a look at all the links you've sent me and analyze what is good about their English and what is bad about their English. So we're going to start um, by saying hello to a few people. Hannah D. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Karel. How's it going? Always good to see you, bud. Chala. Always a pleasure. Um, you'll notice some people have symbols next to their names. That's because they are channel members. If you join at the middle level, it's called exam success level. You also get help with your exam preparation. If you didn't know that, now you do. So let's go on. We're looking at the first one. Okay, let's get this up. Boom. There we go. Um, Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? A cup of coffee's in the way. I think I can move it. Oh, you know what? I can make this smaller. Works better for everyone. Um, I out speaking. I haven't looked at any of these. Just so you know, I haven't looked at any of them. So this is new for me. <laughs> and it, if it's not new for you, well now, maybe you'll know what we're talking about. Okay, first person. I'm going to be very, very judgy. I'm going to be a judgy bitch today. I'm listening from the Flemish region of north of Belgium. Mother tongue is Dutch and Flemish. Ooh, I've never heard someone speak Flemish before. That's interesting for me. A Harriet. Harriet is in my speaking class. She's a legend. Jack Nicholson. That's a great one. That's a great one. Back to worst work class. First language is Arabic. I don't think I have a favorite actor or actress. That's fine. You don't need one. No one really needs one. But okay, so this one, I believe this is coming from Vietnam. Um, okay. Let's get on with it. Let's judge their English. Is it good or bad? First, let me know. Can you hear this? Before before I continue. Can you hear that? Great question. Great question. I'm assuming this is someone who is Vietnamese. Um, uh, yep, more, more phrasal video. For some reason, I can't speak. To yes, there are more phrasal verbs videos coming. Um, but I couldn't film this week because this, I swear, this eye has been giving me so much trouble. I went to the optician the other day and... They told me it's like allergies or something. So they gave me all this stuff that I need to do every day for two weeks to see if it improves. I hope it does. But um, yeah, I need to film videos. Crazy. Hey, bud. Um, big friend from Vietnam. Uh, love your teaching. Hey, I love your comment. Hey, hey. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. Could you hear that? You could hear that? Yes. Yes, I, I'm taking two yeses as a yes. Let's go. Is your mind ready? Oh, I, I was born ready. You only have two minutes. Just lay it on me. I'm gonna get the best two minutes of your life. All right. You have no tools. No tools at all. So let's get started. Yes. On my speaking session. Just lay it on me. This is my challenge to you. Describe a national festival in your country 
when it takes place, why it takes place, and what the people do during this festival, and explain why this festival is important to you. Okay. Okay, first of all, every IL every speaking exam needs to be this format. This is the best thing I've ever seen. How have I never seen this before? I've dropped my phone on the floor because I'm so amazed with it. This is great. Have you ever seen anything like this? This is incredible. Um, wow, this is like sexy aisles. Big fan. The only thing that sticks in my mind is a festival. Do I get a minute of preparation? No, you don't. I want to stop it there. This is how you manipulate English. That was really good. What that guy did. First of all, I can tell that both of them have either lived in an English-speaking country, grew up in an English-speaking country, because they sound like native speakers. They've been speaking for such a long time that, that yeah, if I spoke to them, be like, oh, you're no, you're not from Vietnam, you're from um, America. They have American accents. But what he did, um, let me just jump back. A festival. Okay. She asked him about festivals in your country, right? He said, The only thing that sticks in my mind is a festival. Oh, volume up. Is the... Can hear the sound. Okay, okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah, he said the only thing that sticks in my mind is a festival. Notice he put emphasis on a. He knows how we stress certain words. I know some languages don't do that. Um, when English people speak other languages, we will stress words in your language. And maybe it sounds strange. But no, in English, it sounds very, very good. It sounds very natural. So he said, the thing that sticks in my mind is a festival. So in my mind, he's saying one of many, putting emphasis on one. <laughs> is it dating speaking? It looks like dating IELTS. I'm a big fan of this format. Let's keep going. Do I get a minute of preparation? No, you don't. All right. Challenge accepted. The best can never wait. Okay. Shall we begin? Please begin. All right, so today I'm going to tell you about a national... Okay, by the way, sorry about the sound. That They've put the music very, very loud in this, so maybe we won't watch all of it, but, you know. Holiday of Vietnam, all right? So Vietnam has a bunch of holidays, but what I'm going to tell you about today is something not quite unique to Vietnam. I wouldn't say it's indigenous to the country because it's celebrated by uh, Asian people, you know, uh, all around the world. Uh, it's sort of a cliche, but it's the Tet holiday. It goes by many names. Some people call it Chinese New Year. I think it might be the most popular name for it. Some people call it Lunar New Year. It's also another popular name. Obviously in Vietnam we call it Tet. So Tet is the, you know, the equivalent of uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve. We uh, welcome a new, uh, a new start, right? And uh, usually it's uh, like I was saying, it's the Asian answer to Christmas. So it's a time for family gatherings, for reunions, for, you know, good food and good company. All right, I'm going to stop it there. We, that, that, I think that's enough. But um, some great things. I feel like he didn't say Tet with a Vietnamese accent, so I'm going to say this guy's American. Like, full-on American. But, okay, I have no idea. But, a couple things he did really, really well, and you need to take notice of. Um, he said, um, it may be a cliche, but it's the Tet holiday. And, is it something like, uh... but it's the Tet holiday. It goes by many names. Some people call it Chinese New Year. I think it might be the most. Yeah, uh, some people call it Chinese New Year. I think it might be the most popular name for it. 
Okay, two things I want you to take from this. Um, oh no, it's one thing, really. But really important is when you're doing a speaking exam, um, the examiner loves it when you improvise. So we hate, we hate when a student is reading from a script or just before the exam, they learned a lot of phrases or they learned a lot of um, high level words that they're like, I'm going to use these words. I'm going to use these phrases in my exam. We hate that. It's always very obvious. Um, so what he did is he improvised. That is what you should do. He's like, um, uh, it might be a cliche. So it's, he's giving you his second thought. That is, mm, mwah, chef kiss. You need to do that too. Um, actually, I remember in, in my high school, my French teacher um, told us, like, we were listening to each other's French exams. I don't know why. But one of the girls thought she was in trouble because uh, we were. the topic was, what's your favorite sport? One of the girls' speaking answers was, um, oh, lots of people like football, but I don't really like football. I think it's shit. She thought she was in trouble for that. But the teacher was like, no, that shows you knew how to speak naturally. You knew how to say, well, yeah, a lot of people do this. But to be honest, I just think this is rubbish. When you can sound like your natural self speaking another language, that's all you need to do, especially in IELTS. And this is the format that I would love to see more of. I love this. This is brilliant. Um, yeah. Okay. He's super fluent. I don't think he's an English learner, but anyway, we can still reach reach his level. You don't need to. Yeah, my impression is that he's not an English learner either. I think he's at least not anymore. It, like a full on American accent. Hello, teacher Ali. You just call me Ali. Um, I from Brazil. I'm from Brazil. Where did you get this video from? Um, so I posted on Facebook and Instagram to send me links of famous people speaking English. So these are all links that people have posted or DM'd me. So if you want me to review more in the next lesson, or we could do a theme. I was thinking maybe a K-pop theme. I want to do Blackpink and Twice. Uh, I want to do a special with them um, for next time. But if you have, if you have any suggestions or links, post them. I think you can post them in the chat as well. I think we can have a look today if we have time. You know. Maya, long time no see. Wish I could speak as fluently as this guy. Yeah, of, I, he's fluent. I think he's. I agree with Chima. Chima. Um, he's definitely not an English learner. Or, um, I think he's just full on American. Sounds too good. Too good. Alrighty. Um, who do we do next? we do next someone french we go to france now on soir does he have to say it's only nine seconds long be you be be proud of you because you can be do what we want to do you can be do what we want to do i just what? wait one second <laughs> this is great it's nine seconds long and it's great. Um, do you know who this guy is? Do you know Francois Hollande? He was like, what? Prime Minister, I think, of France? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Let's have a look. Just be you. Be, be proud of you. Be okay, stop there. Be proud of you. 
So we need a what's called reflexive thing here. You be proud of yourself. So it's like when I get up in the morning, um, I could say um, I'm going to. Yeah, uh, in the mirror, I will look at me. No, I'll look at myself. However, 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 that is becoming more common that people drop the self. My prediction is in the future. Yourself, myself is gonna fade from English. That's my prediction. I might be completely wrong, but I'm hearing more and more people are saying things like this. Listen, be proud of you. You're great. Um, it is becoming more common so while in an exam while grammatically this is not correct it is becoming more correct more correct french president prior to macron okie dokie okie dokie has the same accent of me no lolly lolly has the same accent the same as not the same of, the same as. Can we go over Piers Morgan's speech? He sucks. I hate Piers Morgan. He's such a word I can't say without getting to my... Um, the expression, good on you, also yourself before. No. No, because that's me saying to you. That's not you think good about yourself. It's a different thing. That's me saying, ah, oh, I think good. This is good for you. Um, good on you. It's it's a strange expression, but no, that was always good on you. Look about you. You look happy and healthy, baby. I'm from South Korea. Hey, Onmi. How you doing? It's good to see you. Um, what are you eating? What are you drinking today? I am drinking a coffee. Um, which part of South Korea? Same as me. Got it. You got it, Lolly Lolly. Well done. Please, I want to hear Salma Hayek's. Oh, Salma Hayek. Mwah. Love her. Love her. Um... I can't think of a good clip of Salma Hayek. If you find one, again, post it in the comments. We'll use it today. Um, a tea blend? That sounds nice. I want a tea blend. I've got lots of drinks today because it is warm in London. Okay, let's carry on with Monsieur Hollande. Because you can't be, do what we want to do. It's kind of cute. Am I, am I wrong? It sounds kind of cute. I love when people speak another language. Um. Do what. Do what we want you because you can be. Do what we want to do. Okay. What was he trying to say? You can do what we want to do. I think that's what he's trying to say. But, yeah, uh, honestly, never feel bad about your English. At the very worst, in the worst case scenario, you will sound very cute and adorable and people will want to hug you and buy you ice cream. Like this guy, like, I, I don't know his politics, but I want to say well done you for speaking English. Speaking a language which isn't your first language, well done. Good on you. You know. <sighs> ah, sorry I'm late. My favourite actor is Michael Caine. He's a true Londoner and he's a legend. All right, next one. Um, Otinga. English? I'm assuming this is German. I don't know this person. Dear Peter Jungen, dear Wolf Klintz. 
esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to Berlin at the seventh annual conference on the renowned Columbia University. Okie dokie. Um, we say about German people that their English is better than our English. Most of the time that's true. Um, yeah, this guy speaks very good English. Of course he has an accent. Of course he does. Everyone does. Um, and one thing that if you are uh, a speaker of a German language like Austria, I know Austrian and German are not the same, but that same kind of thing. They tend to pronounce every syllable phonetically, which in English we don't do. For example, he says a uh, conference, conference. Um, every syllable has power, but no. Remember in English, we have weak forms. You must remember your weak forms and practice. Um, so instead of conference, conference, buh, buh, com conference, conference, conference. In fact, yeah, you could just say conference, conference, conference. I'm going to a conference. It's so weak, conf conference. It's so, so weak that it's just conference. Yeah. Live at the end of South Korea. Gojedo, which is an island. A fish and bibimbap. I love bibimbap. I could live on bibimbap, which is Korean traditional food for dinner. Dude. Dude. Um Bibimbap, I could eat that every day. It's just healthy veggies. And it tastes delicious. Ah, love it. Yeah. Um, hug and bite. Lana Light. Yes, yes. Again, you will just sound great and cute when you speak English. Don't ever worry about your mistakes. You will just sound adorable. We love it. Um, I mean, will some people make fun? Listen, dickheads will always be dickheads. And if they if they are the type of person that laughs at your attempt at speaking another language, then they are someone you don't want to talk to anyway. That's my opinion. You know, uh, do you know what? The biggest challenges of French and Arab learners when English in English and speaking it? Do you mean French and Arab learners of English? Uh, it's the compound nouns notion, definitely. Words or oh, the word order gets reversed. Yes, that is true. I have noticed that. I have the same problem because Arabic is my native language, so I'm used to pronounce each letter. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is why it's very good to pay attention to the way you speak. This is where listening becomes a speaking class. You don't need to go to a speaking class to improve your speaking. I mean, yeah, of course it helps the best. But when you listen, you are passively learning how to speak. Because you're repeating. You're learning like a baby. That is great. Uh, we're not going to watch all six minutes of this guy, but let's get the highlights. Uh, what's the level of his English? Ooh. Ooh. I don't know, but we're going to, I'm going to grade him. Oh, you know what? I'm going to grade all these people. So first guy, um, oh, he's like uh, at the least C2. He's a native speaker. I think he's just American. Francois. Oh, look at his little face. Look at his little face. Can I do that? Uh, 
He just looks sad. He looks like a sad cartoon. <laughs> um, I want to... Oh. Based on nine seconds, I can't really grade him. I'd need to see more. This guy, however, um, I'm guessing is at least a B2. He's German. Germans are born with B2 English. Your country's subject is highly topical in view to the future global economic development. We have a say. I'm going to stop you there. Um, one very common mistake for German speakers is the pronunciation of the L. Listen to how he says global. G-L-O-B-A-L. -L, global. In view to the future global economic development. Hear that? Global. Global. He, you shouldn't pronounce the end L in a word. Like, let me put it in the chat. Uh, global. This one. That end L. This one right here. There are two ways to pronounce the L in English. The light L, which is uh, like at the beginning of a word, like there's someone in the chat called Lolly Lolly. Um, la, 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 la. Your tongue is hitting just behind the top teeth. La, 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 la. However, at the end of a word, it, the L sound is from a different place in the mouth. Where is it? Global. But, okay. <laughs> well, British people tend to change the L to an L sound. So actually, the tongue touches nothing in the mouth. I'll go slow. Global. Ball. Ball. Global. First L, gl. L, l. Global. The last L is an all. Global. Hear that? Hear the difference? So you don't need to pronounce that second L. Um, I've made a few videos on... Very common feature of German English is the W, which is pronounced like a V. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that. Let me see if, uh, see if this guy does it. We have a saying in Germany. Do not judge. The very next word. We have a say. <laughs> I didn't expect it so soon. But yeah, Karel, exactly right. We have a say. We have a saying. But I think that's, it's not a mistake. It's like an, it's an error. Your brain just, oh, yeah, I know the difference, but I just didn't do it then. Dark L and light L is difficult for French, is it? Interesting. Interesting. He's from Bavaria. As someone from northern Germany, you even notice it. Really? You can notice where he's from, even in another language. That is crazy. Whoa. Like Arnie. I mean, not exactly like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Love how... We should have got an Arnold clip. If someone finds a good Arnold clip, post the link in the chat. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. Use it. Um, is there a level above C2? I mean, yeah. It's just... The level above C2 is just not needing a level. It's native. You're at the point where... Occasionally, there are some words that you don't know. But that's okay. That's that's you in your language, right? Everyone in their own language sometimes sees a new word and they're like, what is this word? I don't know this. That doesn't mean you're a lower level. That word is just new for you. But if you can communicate so effectively in that language that there are no problems, then why would you need a level for it? So... No, there isn't a level. There isn't an official level above C2, but... Native, fluent, would be... Would be the... 
How would you rate our president's knowledge of English? I'm from Polish? No, I'm from Poland. Um. Honestly, I don't remember what he sounds like. Sorry. I don't remember what he sounds like. If you could post a link to him speaking English in the chat, then I'll, I'll have a look. All right, let's have a look. The day before it is night. Now you may rightly wonder whether such a skeptical attitude. Skeptical. Now you can hear it. Skeptical. Again, it's that light L where it should be a dark L. Skeptical. Okay. I didn't tell you the second part. Light L is when the word begins with an L, like lolly, la, la, la. Your tongue. Where's my mouth? I have a mouth. There we go. So your tongue, this guy, will hit here. Whoops. There. La, la, la. Lolly. But when it's a dark L, your tongue doesn't hit there. So when it's something like global, skeptical, let me write those in the chat so we know what I'm talking about. Oh, whoops. Whoops. Yeah, fine. There we go. Skeptical. If the word ends in an L, no, we use the dark L, and that is skeptical. Or, or. Your tongue now is here somewhere. Skeptical. L lolly. Skeptical. So those are the two L sounds. However, like I mentioned, British English, we tend to change the dark L into an L, where the tongue touches nothing in the mouth. Okay. Let's do a little bit more of this guy. Is appropriate and helpful in economic matters. Because, as they say, 50% of business is theology. I do not want to deny this at all. I am just saying that we should be careful and keep our eyes open. The slight tremors sent out by the Dubai crisis these days give us an idea just how fragile our economic recovery still is. Okay, um, this speech is kind of boring, so I'm going to move on. Um, it's hard to grade his English because he's reading from a script, so I don't know how much he can actually use in communication and how much is just reading. Um, you know, A2, good A2, or a B1 student can read anything and make it sound like English. So, skeptical. Exactly, skeptical. Well done. Enrique Silva, hey, how are you doing? Um, Dark L becoming an L. Isn't that a London feature? Nope, it's an English feature. Some people like it, some people don't. It's, like I mentioned in my British pronunciation course, there are many characteristics that people from all over the UK use but different regions, and in those regions, different people choose different characteristics for their own unique accent. That's why I think it's not worth learning someone's accent to copy that person. It, it's better to learn the characteristics and build your own natural accent, which is what I do in my Ultimate British Pronunciation course. It is free on my website, puppeteachme.com. You get an ebook and a video call. And there's a new video on connected speech coming very, very soon. Um, I'll be Snape in that video. I'll be Professor Snape from Harry Potter. And Canon is going to be in the video, if you watch Canon. Been in Texas before? Have I? No. But 
I want to go for the food. I hear there is like crazy good food. It's like tons of barbecue, right? I think. Steak, barbecue, burgers, big food. That's my image of Texas. Hey, JL, thank you for the super chat, buddy. Um, thank you for your support and knowledge. A big hug from Colombia. Gracias. Parcerito. De donde eres? De que parte de Colombia eres? Gracias por el cafecito. Question for you, J Jail? J Jail? When you go to Juan Valdez or Oma, which coffee do you order? I had a dream the other day. I was in Juan Valdez and I ordered a Granny Zado. Coffee for Ali from Joel. Ally, thank you for all your support and knowledge. A big hug from Colombia. Hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very kind of you. Um, yep, yeah, you can support the videos by leaving a super chat, it buys me a coffee, makes me happy, makes my day. Um, okay, you know, yeah, I think we're done with this guy. I would, uh, I guess I'm going to say a B2 because he might be a good B1, um, or he might be a nervous C1. A C1 is like advanced level. B2 is upper, mean, uh, upper intermediate. B1 is like pre-intermediate, intermediate. Um, I've never seen this guy speak before, so I don't know if he's nervous, but I don't know. I don't know. You know? I'm eating coffee, yummy. I know. I know. Uh, one regret is that I didn't go to uh, Coffee Land in Colombia. There is a Coffee Land. It's in jail. Maybe you can confirm. In Armenia? Not the country Armenia. Armenia in Colombia, right? But yeah, I regret not going there. Okay, next guy. Petra Poroshenko. I need... I know this guy. Not personally, but three months ago. Oh, this is new. Oh. This might get me demonetized if it's talking about the W word, but um, I think we can all agree F Putin. Drop a thumbs up if you think Putin should fall out of a window. Let us know how many people hate Putin in the chat. Alrighty, let's uh, check this guy's English. Very pleased to welcome Petro Poroshenko, the former president of Ukraine from 2014 to 2019. Thank you so much for speaking to us again on DW. I'm thrilled that you could join us, and I just wanted to jump right in by getting your view on the situation in Bakhmut. Do you think it is the right decision for Ukraine to continue defending the city at all costs? Thank you very much indeed for your invitation. and. The right decision is a bad decision. We can do only based on the full information which we have, the commander-in-chief of Ukrainian armed forces and the president. But uh, the Bakhmut is a symbol. And uh, we have a fighting in Bakhmut for nine months already. Notice he uses that dark L correctly. It's a symbol. His tongue is in the right place for that. So just to show the difference, the light L and dark L, um, if you say the word symbol, oops, symbol, this word, if you pronounce it with a light L, symbol, symbol, see, it sounds German kind of, right? Symbol, symbol, but the dark L correctly, Symbol. Symbol. This means light L. This means dark L. Symbol. Symbol. Bull. Bull. The only thing that changes is my tongue position. Huh? Or here. You can practice this watching. Um. 
I understand this person very yeah he seems pretty good um it's not read from a script so my first thoughts are we're gonna go at least b2 but again he's been speaking 10 seconds so let's press on and i was in bakhmut during this uh, last year more than dozens time to more than dozens time what's the mistake with that sentence what is the mistake with that sentence? I've been there dozens time. Got it. Got it. Really, really good. Yes. Dozens of times. Carry on. Speak to support, to supply the everything for our armed forces and i can tell you that these symbolic steps definitely has a great importance another everybody should understand that this is the way how we can uh, this okay this is the way how um this is a very common mistake um yeah ukrainian for sure russian for sure uh maybe german this is the way how this is a com very common mistake. This is the way how... Flash up on screen. This is the way how... No. This is the way that. Or nothing. This is the way that we do something. This is the way we do something. You don't need... You should... Well, how? No. No how. This is the way that, or this is the way nothing. Uh, the way what? No, Unabi. Good guess, but wrong. This is the way that. Yeah, without how. Harry, exactly, you're a legend. Exactly. F Putin. Meow, meow, meow. Um, yep, likes in the chat if you want to say F Putin. And a like for my video means a big this for Putin. Okay, let's press on. Captured the Russian offensive operation, which were planned and publicly declared in February and March. And the way how we stop Russian offensive operation. Hear it again? The way how we stop? No, the way that we stop. The way in which we stop, that's okay too. Or the way we stop. So the way how? No. Can you, if you're Ukrainian or Russian, can you confirm to me, please, if you translate that, do you use how in the translation, the way how? The way we can stop. See, yeah, we can have nothing there. The way we can stop. The way that we can stop, the way in which we can stop, but not the way how we can stop. Yeah, most of us make this mistake. Ah, okay. I'm learning something today. Good to know. Okay, carry on. This is also uh, very heroic. But Why we Bakhmut need to is Also, there's a very strong r. Very heroic. Um... I'm not going I don't like to say this is a mistake. Um, again, I kind of like it. You may, maybe you have heard your accent is your identity. And this is kind of one of those things. If you say your R, like, there's nothing wrong with it. That doesn't interfere with communication. It doesn't stop understanding. If you can communicate, and you both understand each other. Your accent is your flavor. It's, again, I know I talk about ice cream a lot, but if you have all the ingredients for an ice cream, you can add any flavor and it's still ice cream. You know, your accent is your flavor. That's literally all it is. So, don't be ashamed of your ice cream flavor. <laughs> That's the best piece of advice I can give you. 
Your accent is your ice cream flavour and it is delicious. What can I say? Blueberry, <laughs> blueberry accent. <laughs> exactly. 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 This mistake from our grammar. Vassal, this mistake is from our grammar. Um, okay, we're going to do a tiny bit more. So this guy, there obviously are a few mistakes, a few basic grammar mistakes like plural and single. I'm sure you've noticed them. Um, oh. Coffee for Ali from Eugenia Bram. Eugenia, thank you so much. You absolute legend. Thank you, Eugenia. Um, I've run out of coffee coffee. No, there's a there's a, like a shot of coffee left. Eugenia, thank you so much. Um, you're a legend, and I hope you get all the ice cream today. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, plate. How you doing, bud? How is Japan today? Salma, good to see you again. Um, how is your you're learning Chinese, right? I remember from last time. Um, how is your Chinese going? When we pronounce the R in that way, our teacher at school says we are truly from rural Egypt. Jesus, that sounds like a like the way that they say it sounds like an insult. But I mean, do they? Maybe they mean it as a compliment. Like, wow, you're truly from rural Egypt. Proud of you. Um, yeah, I mean, again, if your teacher says that, send her my way. I'll gladly give her some ice cream and tell her she's wrong. As for how in the Russian version of this sentence, that's why the mistake is very frequent for the rush. Okie dokie. So if you translate um, that sentence, then now I understand. Right. Got ya. Got ya. The famous R, Arab, uh, Rotic as well. It's one of our challenges when trying to speak proper English accent. Okay, this is the thing. Again, uh, it doesn't make you sound bad. It just makes you sound like you have an accent. And that is not a bad thing. Um... It's only bad if you want to copy the British accent or the Amer the American accent. Which is fine. If you want to do that for fun, for if you're an actor, an actress, you want to do it for a role, that's fine too. Um, but if you just want to communicate in English, don't worry about your accent. You sound great. Hey. Hey. Where are you watching from, Eugenia? Alrighty, um, I think we're done with this guy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say a B2. He could be a C1 or a C2 if he took classes um, with Papa Teach Me. But next one. Audrey Fleuro. Don't know you. Um the specificity of the, of the theory, it's 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 a French French oh French accents are so sexy they just are. Um, I need to watch that again. One second. The specificity of the, of the theory. Two things. Theory. This is a TV show, right? Um, in lots of languages, you call it a theory. S E I, whoops, S E R I E, right? A Siri. However, no, in English, we say series or show. You don't really say series. I'm watching a show at the moment. I'm watching a series, sounds European. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, we'd just say, I'm watching a show at the moment. What show are you watching? Yeah, that's that famous actress from that show. We don't say Siri. Series, really. Um, specificity. Um, 
the specificity of the, of the series. Also notice she corrects the specificity of the, and then she corrects the to the. Lots of languages don't have the. This sound. Um, yeah, well done to her for self-correcting. Again, you don't have to. Again, the French accent, very sexy. So, what, are people going to tell you you sound bad for sounding sexy? No. Who are the sexy police? Siri, it's, it's, it's a cop series, you know, with the... With a murder each each episode, so the kind of old-fashioned series that we used to watch when we were <laughs> when we were young. I mean, I grew up with this kind of series. Uh Pronunciation: young. Um, I often see these two words um, mispronounced. Put them on the screen. First one, he said young, young. No, ya. Yeah. O, a, young. Same for this one. Cousin, cousin, no. A, again. Cousin, cousin. Second syllable, it's not sin, it's a schwa sound. Sin, cousin, cousin. Young, cousin. Repeat with me. Young, cousin. Well done. Hello, how often does he do these live videos? He does these videos um, every Sunday. Unless I'm sick. Um, and now it's summer, I shouldn't be sick very much anymore, I hope. So yeah, every Sunday, bud. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. I'm f from Finland now, but I'm not a Finnish. No, with Finland... We say, I'm not Finnish. Fun fact, my first, like, girlfriend was Finnish. Um, yeah, she's an ex for a reason. I'm not gonna... Uh, that's not a reflection on all Finnish people. But you have a lovely country. Um, yeah, let's carry on. Uh, so when they offer me the part... I thought, okay, it's another cop series. Uh, it's not the kind of series I want to watch, so I'm I'm not really interested in. But the character... I'm not interested in. Remember, you need to finish that sentence. I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in that. This is a very common mistake that I have to correct. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in it. I was already there. So it's a... Uh, um, she's a housekeeper with an amazing IQ, but... Uh... She's an housekeeper. I often hear this mistake as well. An housekeeper. An hotel. An... House. Um, this is from French, obviously, and Italian as well. Using a when it should be an, and using an when it should be a. Especially with H words. Um, I think in French and maybe Italian too, you remove the H, right? Um, also, yes, in Cockney English, of course. But she is not speaking Cockney. She is speaking just plain English. Uh, so she should use uh, a. What's the friggin... Uh. She's a housekeeper. An house. That was it. Sorry. Yeah. She's a housekeeper. Not an housekeeper. Keep that in mind and you won't go wrong. Finns probably know very good. Yes, more actually more than Germans, we say like Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish. Easily, their English is better than us because they grew up uh, not with relying on subtitles. They grew up with like the 
everything on TV is in English and then has the subtitles underneath. So it basically, if you watch enough TV from baby age in that language, you're gonna learn it. You can't avoid it. French never pronounced the H. There we go. There we go. Okay, uh, we're done with her. She's like a C1. Yes, there are a few little mistakes, so we can't really put her as C2, but she's very confident. She speaks... She sounds very... Like, she's bored of interviews today. So, I... It might not be fast, but she sounds natural when she speaks. Um, with an amazing IQ, but um, she doesn't... She doesn't know that she's super gifted because uh, it's always has been a burden for her. She never did any studies. I mean, she stopped, she, she stopped school very. Yeah, she would squeak into a C1, at minimum a very high C, uh, very high B2, sorry. Um, so this is Audrey Fleuro. Audrey Fleuro. Why does French sound so good? So good. It's crazy. All right, last one. Last one. Peter Sagan. I don't know this guy. Um, funny interview collection. All right, let's see it. Peter Sagan, fifth place again. Uh, second, second again for the fifth time in this Tour de France. Um, how does that feel with uh, yeah? Uh, the green on your shoulders. Good. I am happy for uh, yeah some points, but uh, for sure I don't went in breakaway just for the points. I went in breakaway for uh, try to win for a <laughs> short time <laughs> in, in the line, and uh, also I was tired, but uh, still. Wow. <laughs> I don't know where he's from. Um, notice the way he said tired, tired. When you are, you are tired, 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 not tired, tired, yud, tired. Thank you so much. I am planning to participate more of your classes. Exciting, I think you mean to say. Hope you're not sick too much. You're not be sick. Pass the IELTS exam finally. Eugenia. There are um, IELTS PDF preparation things on the YouTube community tab of my channel. You're joined as a member, right? So I've added all of them on, yeah, YouTube community tab. I can't remember how to get there. YouTube, please fix this. It's like, it should be easier for you to find. But if you look at my posts, you'll find it. It's there. Because you remember, you'll see it. Peter Sagan is from Slovakia. Oh, okay. I did a good climb, I think, but after, you know, it was a little bit strange wind in, in the climb. Nobody don't work after comes. Nobody don't work or walk? Like, they're talking about... Is he a cyclist? Or is he a runner? So, maybe he means walk. I'm not really sure. But nobody don't? No. Nobody walks. That's a double negative the other way, and that would not make sense. The group from back, and then everybody just was sitting and looking what, what I going to do. I I was climbing my, my tempo for uh, if somebody attack, I can catch him, but... Uh, yeah, on the top of the climb, I, I had one minute five and I did full gas descent. I risk, I did some risk also, but uh, no. He's very mumbly, isn't he? Um, this is the thing, even if your English is at a good level, make sure you don't mumble. Pronounce your words clearly, because if you do that in a speaking exam, your communication goes down, right? So 
God. Say your words, man. <laughs> but again, though, it sounds very cute, doesn't it? Like, I can't complain. It's just, it just sounds adorable. So, Peter Sagan, if you're watching, you, you seem like a chill guy. <laughs> what a ledge. Emil Wang, thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. Um, first time here. Are you estuary accent? I'm not. Your question should be, do you have an estuary accent? Also, that's a coffee. Thank you very much. Um, no. I am not Cockney or estuary, and I'm not posh either. There are levels of estuary Cockney, and there are levels of posh. I always put myself in the middle because depends who I'm speaking to. I'll be honest, if... Okay, there was one time I was cycling on the on a bike on a pavement and the police stopped me. Immediately, I went very posh. Uh, I don't know why. When I'm on when I'm on holiday or speaking to Americans, I speak more posh. But when I'm with friends, I get more casual, a bit more towards estuary or cogni. So, really depends. Depends on my mood. Depends who I'm with. Depends where I am. Yeah. He just looks exhausted. He yeah he does. He just finished a, a race. I assume. Uh, I'm starting to think that with so many accents of non-native speakers, English is going to be unrecognizable, I think you mean. Don't you think we must take care of English sounds? Oh, why am I so hiccupy today? Sorry for the hiccups. As I said earlier, in each region of England, in the UK, um, there are... Okay, let's take London as this region, right? In London, there's no London accent. There are many different characteristics that make a British accent. And even saying British, people will get mad at me because there are so many characteristics of it, right? Um, but in a region like London or Manchester or Milton Keynes, there are people within that region who will choose different characteristics. They might change their L to an L more often. They might change their T to a glottal T more often or less often. So it's not about region. It's not about much other than personal preference, especially today where everyone lives online and... Uh, you can speak however you want and you listen to whoever you want in whatever accent. So, hmm. My answer to your question is uh, we must take care of English sounds. No, I mean, language doesn't have a want or a need. Language is forever moving, forever changing. We, we, we don't need to do anything. It will be. That's that. <laughs> it's important to use your posh English at the right moment. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it really helps. Um, I was hoping to see Sofia Vergara, her accent. Right? Right? Oh, we love Sofia Vergara. It was enough for, uh, for me in the States. What was the meaning of your uh, finishing gesture? <clears throat> Yeah, I think this uh, for uh, take energy. Uh, uh, you know that? No. Wolf of Wall Street, right? Yeah, I did that for take energy. What is the mistake there? I did it for take energy. No, I did it to get energy. I did it to do. I did it to make. I did it to get energy. Not for. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're done there. We've been here an hour. I don't want to bore you any longer. If you have any suggestions for the next one, I want to make themed this. So if you have any suggestions for who I should judge or rate next time, DM me on Instagram or on the Facebook post. I hate using Facebook, but you have to. Or Twitter, actually. There was one on Twitter, but I don't have it. Never mind. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you want to join my speaking class? Um, there's one starting in an hour from now. Join me at patreon.com slash papateachme. Join my speaking class. If not, see you next time.